Hi, before we get started, yes, I do composting the other way, you know, leaving piles of leaves and debris out in the woods and it takes how long it takes. This is not that. This is more involved. So let me just get that out of the way. Okay, let's get started. Far too often, gardeners think of garden soil as something that you get a few bags of at your local garden supply. You know, it's the stuff that you grow your plants in. But over the last few years, I've come to the realization that that couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, the ability to improve and maintain high quality soil is just as, and possibly more important than gardening skills. And so to that end, uh, last year, I decided to radically overhaul the way that I compost. And in fact, the resulting project that I built, I refer to as my composting lab. Here's a tour. Right off the bat, I try to monitor the ratios of the inputs coming into the compost. That's why I have a hanging scale in the middle of my lab. This allows me to weigh the quantities of everything that's going in. This makes it possible for me to figure out the ratios. On top of that, I use my Monty monitor to make sure that I'm nailing the ratios. The two main tools that I use for the chipping and shredding stage is a heavy chipper that I use for the dry, bigger, usually brown material, and a custom-made shredder that I use mainly for the, the smaller, the green, and usually wetter stuff. Okay, now one of the critical aspects to producing compost in volume and in a timely manner is surface area. So this means the smaller the size of the inputs, you know, the browns, the greens, and all that stuff that makes up our compost, the better. And so after I've gotten everything weighed, then it's time to get to chipping and shredding. Often I will add nutrients and azomite during the shredding stage. This is when the actual composting starts. Over the next week or so, the bin is gonna heat up to around a maximum of 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees centigrade. Anything warmer than that and you start killing the good bugs and you don't want that. Really, this is the stage when you're almost like a farmer. You want the little bugs in there to thrive and so you've given them a lot of surface area. There's a lot of sugar in there for them to attack and to digest 
And uh, having access to a Monty monitor at this point really pays off. Now you might have been wondering what these white pipes are. Well, they're part of an internal aeration system that I put in that's easily charged by means of a blower. And so that way you can just plug in the blower to the port and aerate the system without having to actually physically turn it. Once an adequate amount of time and heat have passed that have thoroughly sterilized this bin, bin one of pathogens and seeds, and it's given the, the chance of the beneficial organisms to develop a healthy population, at this point, I sift bin one into bin two using the Earthkeeping Green Sifter. And I have it mounted on a slight angle forward so that as I turn it, the heavier, larger pieces will come to the front of the bin, making it easier to take them out and either re-shred them or add them to a raised bed as part of the hugel culture process. Since the contents of bin two have already been sifted, all that has to happen now is I open the front of bin two and shovel it into bin three. This makes room in bin two for more to come from bin one, and it has the added benefit of giving the contents of bin three one final turning. Now it's just time. We wait and we allow uh, the mixture to become that chocolatey, nutritious stuff that our plants love so much. This is one of the reasons why I built uh, the compost system here, right next to my greenhouse, because the final step is I just need to move it into the greenhouse. Obviously this video wasn't about how to compost, it was a tour of my setup and my process. If you'd like more detailed uh, content about that, check out my other videos on composting. And if you have questions or comments, please, I want to hear about them in the comments section below. And as always, if you like this video, you might like these.